If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors according to Indeed data and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites according to a recent Indeed survey. With Indeed, everything hiring is all in one place and it makes it so easy. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences each each day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. The more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join the more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash podcast. Just go to Indeed.com slash podcast right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Terms and conditions apply. Indeed.com slash podcast. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Sugarcoated Murder is proud to be a part of The Oracle Network. Welcome to Sugarcoated Murder Podcast, a brilliant true crime podcast hosted by two zany sisters, all while baking up delicious treats in their kitchen. Here are your podcast hosts, Karen Devaney. And Ann Varner. Sugar. Sugar. We have a guest. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I know somebody wants to be our guest. That's amazing. That's crazy. Now, how much did that cost? Oh, I, well, I charged it all to PayPal. We'll have to pay it off in, a, in increments. In increments, that's right. <laughs> yes, today we have Liz with us, and Liz has a great podcast. It's such a positive, uplifting, informative podcast called Coffee Convos with Liz. Is that right? I got it all, all the words in the right places? Yes, she did. Coffee and Convos with Liz, absolutely. Well, Liz, do you want to tell us about yourself a little bit? What do you want people to know? Awesome. So I am super excited to be here um, and be cooking with you guys. And my podcast, Coffee and Combos with Liz, which can be found on podcasting platforms or my website, coffeecomboswithliz.com. And I talk with friends, leaders in the community, and just really anyone who's really um, great at having conversation about politics, wellness, activism. And it's really a safe space to talk about positivity, to really talk about issues that are important to people as well as connecting people with resources. So that's pretty much it. So if you want to be on the podcast, if you have a message and you want to share it, like let's message me, reach out to me. Yeah. um, I've seen a couple of your episodes, a lot of your episodes. I've actually gone on and watched you live stream, which I really enjoy doing. And so you've had a lot of um, really interesting guests and it's a wide variety. I like the diversity of the different guests that you have. So it's not all just kind of, people that just have one message so that's kind of interesting so absolutely yeah well today what we're going to do with Liz because she's going to slate in the kitchen yay Liz <laughs> we're actually doing apple pie tacos what I know it's, it looks fun I think it's going to be pretty easy I think Liz I will tell you that I shortcutted my taco shells I don't know if it's going to make a difference. We'll see. I actually baked them in the oven. I was trying to be a little bit healthier. I know. I turned a muffin pan over. Oh, that was so smart. Well, it's not because I came up with it on my own. The only thing is uh, the sugar. You know how when you fry them, you coat them in sugar and cinnamon? The sugar and cinnamon doesn't stick the same way it does when you fry them. Yeah. So, I mean, if you want it coated with sh- cinnamon sugar, I would fry it. I was just trying to shortcut it today just because <laughs> it's been a crazy day. I was fighting with technology. We were fighting with technology. We were. So um, We don't always win, but tonight we ever came. Yes, tonight looks like we're winning <laughs> so far. <laughs> but, yeah. And we're, while the two of you are slaying in the kitchen, we're just going to casually talk about a murder. I know, and Liz is the one that sent us this murder case. Yes, as we're slaying in the kitchen, we're going to talk about somebody else that got slayed. Yeah. We're going to talk about the disappearance of Jennifer Dulos, and she is from Connecticut. Yes. 
Is her town, is she, was she close to where you live or far away? So it wasn't that super far. So a lot of the places mentioned are places I've ever, like towns that I've been to, but it's not super far. So it wasn't like that was distant. Like Connecticut is relatively small. Yeah, it is. So yeah, like it, it's small. So like these are all, everyone kind of, I think, felt connected because one, it's Connecticut and nothing happens here. And like, <laughs> You know, like, in Connecticut, like, you always have to travel somewhere to, you know. So, people are familiar with these towns. Right. And you just don't associate this level of crime with, you know, these areas. Right, right. And this was a big one. This was back in May of 2019. She disappeared, and she's never been found. Mm -hmm. Has there been a lot of coverage? There was at the time. Like, everyone... Kind of was like, okay, like, what happened? Where is she? And it was an interesting story, especially, which I'm sure we'll get into, around when her husband um, committed suicide. Because yeah, that I was a big shocker. Yes, and it was like, he's dead. He's alive. He's back. He's dead. <laughs> and it, it was this weird, real-time event of, like, what is going on? Right. Yeah. It, I did see some stuff. In an article that I pulled up, Anne was in Anne's in charge of doing the research for the murder because I'm doing the <laughs> cooking. <laughs> we, on these episodes, we tend to split things up a little. We do. So I didn't do. I mean, I didn't do like a huge deep dive into it, but I've watched a lot of coverage of it. And interestingly enough, I've been told by my sister that Dateline is covering this oh, very soon. So I'm this wondering. This weekend, if, I think Friday. I'm wondering if maybe there oh, isn't an update that we that we don't know seen about. Yet. Yeah. Mm. So I thought it was interesting. So I told I told Ann we got to get this edited and out before Dateline comes on because we were doing it first. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want somebody to think, oh, they just watched Dateline and did their podcast. No, that's not what we did. So Absolutely. for anybody out there listening that is not familiar with this case, this Jennifer Dulos dropped her kids off at school and then she disappeared. Nobody knows what happened to her. Yeah. The police suspect that her husband, his, he's, I am not. I can't remember where he was from. He's definitely foreign. foreign right. His name was Fotis, F-O-T-I-S. And the the two, Jennifer and Fotis, were separated having marital issues. And he actually had a girlfriend named Michelle who was suspected of being involved in something to do with Jennifer's disappearance, along with Fotis, which I thought it's just such a weird name. Fotis. Fotis. I know. <laughs> it sounds like a bad word, like I'm gonna call you a Fotis. That's right. <laughs> So she disappeared in May of 2019. In January of 2020, that's when Fotis committed suicide. And there had been some video that came out, played over and over again, of Fotis and his girlfriend in his truck driving from trash can to trash can to trash can, throwing things away. And that they is suspected so that awful. those things that were being thrown away had something that could connect them to Jennifer's murder. Or maybe parts of her body. It could have been parts of her body. but So was he ever arrested at all? Was he ever charged in anything? They did get arrested for tampering with evidence and hindering a prosecution. Okay. But they got out. So, so he so he was so he got off on the charges or he was waiting to go to trial? You know, I'm not really sure. Do you know Liz? Well I believe so he had gotten arrested and was out on bond. And what I believe was happening is they were going to, like, arrest him and, like, charge him. And, like, a trial was going to start. And in my opinion, I think he was like, nope, I'm not <laughs> going through this. So um, then back to when he, I believe, um, was it, like, carbon monoxide poisoning? Like, he was in his garage and tried to commit oh, suicide. Right. Or committed suicide. Right. Right. right so right, right. in January of 2020, they did arrest him for capital murder and kidnapping. So he must have been out on bond when yeah. he committed suicide. Correct. But they've never discovered any piece or part of Jennifer anywhere. That's horrible. Just like the bloody, like bloody rags or things like that. Right. 
They yeah. did set his bond at six million dollars. <laughs> oh my gosh! And he was able to bond out. He was able to bond out, and he was due to return to court in February. Wow! So I guess he decided to. And they had kids, right? They had children. I think there was like four of them. Yeah, four. Kids. I think four. And they were separated when she disappeared. I don't think that they had been officially divorced. Yet. Oh, I think that they were separated. Were they living in separate residences? Yes. Okay. And it was a very contentious divorce. Right. Very wealthy. Yep. Neighborhood. They they had a lot of money. He's a, he was a contractor. Okay. It seems like she worked at one point, but was maybe not working at the time okay. of her death. A presumed death. I guess I need to say that because they never death. Found her. Yeah, because they never found her. I guess that's why the fiance, the fiance, <laughs> or the girlfriend, or whatever she is. <laughs> I just needed to say that word. That's all. But the the chick. Um, I guess that's why she's never gone to trial because no body, no crime. Correct. And now their prime suspect is gone. And their prime suspect is gone. So, so I mean, who are you going to even say? Well, they could still, if they could prove that she was an accessory, they could still prove it. I mean, if they could prove it, they could still charge her. Right. But I guess they're having trouble charging her. If I mean, they know a crime was probably committed, but what was the crime and where is where is this lady? Right. Her so when he kids, committed suicide, he, he hooked up a vacuum cleaner hose to the car, and that's how he committed suicide, carbon monoxide poisoning. He was 52 when he died. That's very creative. And he did leave a suicide note that said, I refuse to spend even an hour more in jail for something I had nothing to do with. That was okay. his suicide note. Well, sometimes my not, don't tell the truth. You know, I love my children, nothing. No, not I'm sorry, just, children, I have to do right. this. I can't live under the scrutiny. Like, I, children, who are they? Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really sad. That's a sad situation. I guess there's not, if this happened back when? 2000? 2020. Oh, 2020. Oh, so she disappeared in May of 2019. Okay. Well, and then 2020, and which then was January, a horrible year for everybody. He committed suicide. Okay. It was like this timeline. It, it, it was almost like, because they, tra- they, they were tracking him. Yeah. And because he was out on bond. And so... Some article was talking about the timeline, and so like the girlfriend, they had called her because she was, I guess, that she was following Foytis to his bond office. I guess they were having a bond hearing, and then she was like, "Oh yeah, like I'm following Foytis. We're over there," and they're like, "No, his tracker says he's at the house." So oh. there was some lies even going on about that. Um, that seemed suspect. So it was almost to me like. Um, he was like, okay, I need you to pre- like pretend you're going there, but make sure you come back and get me so I don't die type of thing. That's yeah. how I decided to be consp- have a conspiracy theory about. Right. Well, and, and, you know, they use, they do a lot of cell phone tracking and things, but I've seen many cases where the accomplice has the phone while the mm-hmm. person's out committing the crime so that you uh-huh. can't tell that that, that person was ever with the victim. Because there's no cell phone data. And, I mean, these people seem to have pulled it off, unfortunately. But I just feel so sorry for those kids. They don't have their mom. They don't have their dad. And they don't have any answers. Exactly. And there were five of them. There were five children. Oh, wow. And they now live with um, relatives of hers. Good. So that's good. That's That's good. But, yeah, I mean, they're without either parent. Yep. And... The girlfriend, I guess, has has not been helpful in the least. She's not offered any insight. Well, there's a shocker. Right. She has no incentive to. She's got nothing to say. Mm -mm, She's probably moved on and has another boyfriend. Oh, I'm sure of it. All right, Liz, where are you on your apples? All right, so they are bubbling, bubbling. They're getting soft. They are getting soft. They're bubbling. (laughs) Mine are, too. How's yours doing? They're bubbling. Um, I just how do I work the timer? Hit timer. I, I know. I oh. can't. I can't figure out anything. So I think they have about eight minutes before they're soft. Okay. What do you think? Do you think are yours about? About there. I think another like five to eight minutes. They they'll be there. Okay, we can test them. And then, do you want to do your shells? Yes, I need to get them in. Let me see. I'm gonna turn on my oil a little hotter. Nope, that should be good. <laughs> So, I'm going to try mine without the cinnamon sugar on the outside. Okay. So, I've done these, and I think these are yummy. 
Yeah. Like, but I, I'm going to try and eat a little healthy like you guys are doing and not do any sugar on the outside. So no. I'm going to see how it turns out. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I got my first shell. It's in. It's frying up. Okay. So I'm just going to go over the recipe for people that are listening to let them know what we've done so far. And this is a recipe that I found on somewhere on Instagram. And then I took a picture of the recipe and poor Liz, I sent her the picture of the recipe. It cuts off like more than half the recipe. Oh, no. So I was like, we're just going to guess. We're just going to guess at this. And she's such a trooper. She's like, okay, all right. I don't even know where it came. The, I don't even know where it came from anymore because the side of it just says yum. <laughs> So what we've done is we've taken um, flour tortillas, or you can do corn tortillas. It doesn't matter which ones. I The way that the recipe calls is for you to get the flat tortillas and to fry them in oil. Notice I said oil. You I've been did. practicing all day you saying did very oil. Well. So you put, no, I almost did it. I almost said the wrong word. <laughs> so you put them in your oil and you fry them up. And then, and there's a specific way to do it if they're flat and you want them folded into tacos. That's why I was a little bit intimidated. <laughs> so the way that I did it was, I, <laughs> I just flipped, I, I flipped over a muffin tin and I went in between the indentations and just took these little street, flower street tacos that I bought and, and set them in there and then put them in an oven on 375 for about 8 to 10 minutes, it might have been 12, until they start to brown. So however you do your taco shells, when you have them hot, you put them in a, you roll them in a concoction of cinnamon and sugar, and you make a cinnamon sugar however you want the ratios to be, Right. but it needs to be a half a cup is what they said. I did not use the full half cup, but you roll them, or I put them in a baggie and shook them very gently. So to coat them, it didn't stick well to mine because there's no oil, oil, there's no oil. If you have oil, it'll, it'll coat it a lot, but if you bake them, then you're not going to get very much of a coating, but I think you get a bit, little bit of a flavor in there. Right. What you also do is you cut up four to six apples. You can use, I used honey crisp. I used a three honey crisp, and then I threw in one Granny Smith just to give it a little bit of tartness. You put that in a pot and you put a half a cup of water in there and two teaspoons of cinnamon and a half a teaspoon of net nutmeg and you put that in your pot with a half a cup of sugar and then you mix it all together and then you put it on medium heat for about 10 minutes and it's going to bubble. I, I put it on high first so I could get it rolling and then I turn it down and that gets them soft and then I mean easy peasy. Mac and cheesy. Mac and cheesy, but we're <laughs> having apple taco ease. Then you just spoon it in there. You spoon it, you spoon the mix into the taco. Oh. Like, how fun is that? That is so fun. You can top it with ice cream. Yum. Cool Whip. Yum. Ready Whip. Yum. Or homemade whipped cream. Bingo. I'm going to show Liz how to make homemade whipped cream in a mason jar. Very nice. Because this is one of our tips. <laughs> this is one of our tips. Um, I'm not sure if you realize this. I hope our listeners realize it by now. But on, she's going to say something if I say her. She will. Okay. Yes. On your Echo Dot that starts with an A. <laughs> if you go into your app on your phone and you you can actually go in and I don't remember what they're called. Slaying in the kitchen. Yeah, but what are the what is that called? Oh, she's yeah. already. Here's your reminder. Oh, oh she's reminding she, me to yeah. take the trash out, even though I specifically requested that she not remind me to take the trash out. Yeah, tonight. she's got a mind of her own, doesn't she? She's very stubborn. <laughs> Golly day, there she goes again. She is something else. She's got an attitude. She does have an attitude. She knows lady. we're talking about her. You can go on and you can download Slaying in the Kitchen, and you can uh -huh. ask the A person every day to play your Slaying in the Kitchen. And you will get a tip from me or Ann on just like tips on measuring things, just tips and tricks and, okay. and shortcuts on the A word for your kitchen. And it could be, I mean, it's so this was one of the things that we actually put on there is how to make whipped cream in a mason jar. Yes. I'm going to go get my ingredients. And while she's doing that, I'm going to go. All right. Going back to the 
disappearance of Jennifer, just a little bit of background on Fotis. You, we, we call him Fotis, and you call him Fotis. So I'm, sh I'm sure you're right, and we're completely wrong because <laughs> we never get the names right. But he is uh, originally from Turkey and was raised in Greece. And Jennifer and Foytas met at Brown University in Rhode Island. They, I think it was like 2017 when they got together and got married. And she was a very well-known author. She was a writer. She had a blog that a lot of people followed, you know, mom, a mom blog. She had two sets of twins. So that's the first four. <laughs> and then wow. they had another baby. And then they had another one they added on that wasn't enough. Right. Wow. So two sets of five twins. of them. And she's actually from a very prestigious family. She's from New York originally. And they have been mm -hmm. going through a very bitter divorce and child custody battle. She found out that he had been seeing other people. And that's bad. You can't do that when you're married. You can't. You're not supposed to. <laughs> it's very bad when you it do It makes that. the other person very angry. It does. And bitter. Just a little bit. Yeah. And so that's how you get a contentious divorce. You're supposed mm -hmm. to divorce first and then go find your other person. Right. But he did it in the wrong order. Okay, Liz. What I have is one mason jar that I put in the refrigerator and I got it cold. Okay. But you don't have to. But it's okay. just a thing I do. It's just a thing. All right. Okay. I have heavy whipping cream. Okay. Okay. I'm going to pour heavy whipping cream, and I'm not even going to measure. This is okay. like, this is a half pint. I'm probably going to pour half of it in there. But that's the nice thing about doing this in the mason jar is you can do it for just yourself if you want fresh whipped cream. It's okay. so easy. Turn you can turn it off. Turn it off. Yeah. I'm gonna pour about half in there. See? And then I'm going to add to it about two tablespoons. Oh, hi. Holly, oh, dang. <laughs> Glasses don't work either. About two tablespoons, it's sad. Two tablespoons of powdered sugar. Okay, let me get the powdered sugar. <laughs> and I love powdered sugar because it goes all over my kitchen, or my sister's kitchen, not mine. <laughs> Two tablespoons. Okay. If I don't measure, is that bad? No, no not at it's all. It's an all an eyeball situation. You really are going to do it more to taste. Some people don't put any powdered sugar in their whipping cream. I, I think like that's that. godlessness. Yeah. Because that's just milk. <laughs> all right, I got it in there. Okay, now, is this our good bottle? That's the good bottle. That's there. the good bottle. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to do a half teaspoon of vanilla. This is also optional. You don't have to measure. You can eyeball it. It doesn't take a lot of vanilla. It's what I would call a titch. And I'm going to show you, this is our kill of vanilla in the process of fermenting. <laughs> and we, we make this ourselves and we sell it. Okay. Yeah, it's homemade. And it's made. we make ours with bourbon. A lot of vanilla is made with vodka. We like bourbon, so we use it. But vanilla extract has, it's made with alcohol and vanilla beans. We use our favorite bourbon because we <laughs> like to drink it. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a little bit of that in there, just a little bit of vanilla. I did a half teaspoon. You can do a quarter. You can do a full. Whatever, so whatever your little hearts desire. And I'm just gonna say that you don't have the kilo vanilla, so yours isn't gonna be as good. But that's okay. Listen, I saw that kilo vanilla. I was like, hmm, I'm missing out. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. <laughs> don't shake it down low. Don't go. Don't go. Don't, low. don't go the low one. <laughs> right. Let's go with that. Yeah, we go high. We go out to the side and get those <laughs> bat wings that we all grow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, it's good for my shoulder because I've had shoulder surgery, so it's good for my shoulder. Yeah, that's funny. Yep. I mean, who knew this could be such a workout? Liz, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Are you uh, originally from Connecticut? So I have been in Connecticut, born and raised. I spent some time down south in like South Carolina. Oh, um, what? Well, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. North Carolina. Oh. I was little, 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 little. From far North Carolina. Okay. I was there like three to age five. Like I was super little. Um, then came up here and have been up here. I've been a Connecticut girl. 
Um, New England, true and true. You don't have any accent. Do people in Connecticut have, like, really thick accents normally or just no accent? So some people say that we have an accent because we just talk different than everyone, like how we pronounce. Now, our accent in Connecticut isn't, like, Boston or New York as pronounced. Okay. Um, so, and we don't have, like, a cool accent. <laughs> like, yeah. So we're, we're just, like, New England. Yeah, because people can understand you, though. Yes. Everybody can understand. I would say that your accent is a clean accent because everybody can understand what you're saying. You don't need subtitles. Yeah. I'm sure people probably need subtitles with us sometimes, especially when I say things like oil or diaper, <laughs> things that are not real words, but it's okay. And then I make up words. That's funny. Yeah. How did you get into podcasting? So I've been involved in like politics and I like I ran for office a couple of times. <gasps> That's so exciting. Just, yeah, and so like I just really love the whole concept of politics and I the like, people so politics are really big where I live in my town, Waterbury. And so like, that's how you meet people. And like, it's just, it consumes everything. Even if you're not into politics, it's somehow, it's just important and it makes its way into the conversation. So I, um, people would always talk about like, um, oh my God, did you hear this a debate they had on the radio and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, I'm at work. It's the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, so I'm like, you know what? I want to podcast and give people an opportunity to participate in some of those conversations um, after, you know, they've been played. And so it started out, I just wanted it to be about local politics, and it really morphed from there. Like, I had people like, oh, my God, I would love to come and talk about this, or, oh, my gosh, hey, I'm this person. And, like, you know, it just kind of became, like, a home for topics around um, politics and wellness and activism, especially um, in 2020, when everything was going on around racial justice issues, and right. coronavirus, and we really saw how politics, it choked up in everything, right. right? whether it was a mask or a vaccine or your job, like it just, you found out it was in everything. And so it became really political heavy and um, around a lot of activism issues. And so mm -hmm. that's how it kind of morphed more into that direction. That's amazing. That is amazing. I feel like we're with a celebrity because she's been like oh she's run God. for politi political office and things. And wow. Like we're we, we no. I have too many skeletons in my yeah, closet. Yeah. Like no. <laughs> They're gonna look at me and say, uh, no, don't even put your name on that ballot. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! I feel this like getting thicker. Don't you? Okay, so the timer went off, so we can open it and check it, and hopefully it's thick. Ooh. <laughs> Look at that. Ooh. There you go. It is homemade whipped cream. Yum. Can you get over that? Oh, my God. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. This is, a, this is a, such a fun party activity. Like, yes. Yes. Oh it really is. It is. It's uh, get and, your people to make their own whipped cream. Yes, everybody make their own whipped cream. You can get those little mini jars yes. and just make everybody shake their own whipped cream up. But it's That's nice because you can... I'm going to order some killer vanilla, and we're going to have, like, an ice cream party. Yeah. There, there you go. go. There you go. <laughs> so, now that our whipped cream is done, do you think your apples are done? I think so. Okay. And I told them also looking cool, because I did that last time, and I burned my mouth. So I said, hey, let's let it sit. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know. This is definitely going to have to cool for a minute. It's so, boiling hot. It's boiling hot. I'll just finish up the, the whole case, uh, the Jennifer Dulo's case. The last information that I saw out there, the attorneys for Foytis' girlfriend mm -hmm. were filing a motion that had something to do with her getting charged and being read her Miranda rights in English when mm -hmm. oh. her, her native or she, her language of choice is Spanish. Okay, so maybe that's her first oh, language. Yeah, so I know she was, like, she did some news reporting for ESPN in South America. Oh. But I don't, I never could really find out where she originated, where she is from. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I guess if I looked really hard, I could probably figure maybe it like out. But Venezuela or something. Could be, could be. But her sisters have come out and said she doesn't have she doesn't have anything to do with it. But I thought it was really interesting because I watched uh, I think it was a forty eight hours that I watched way back when when the reporter asked the sister 
did your sister have anything to do with it? Does she know where Jennifer is? Yeah. His sister responded, of course she didn't have anything to do with it. Okay. okay. But she never answered the question of, do you, does she know where Jennifer is? Right. I thought that was kind of interesting. So it, it'll be nice when the new date line comes out to see if there's any new information on the case. I don't know where they could possibly go with it unless something's happened. Something's happened. I agree. I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to watch, but hopefully everybody will have listened to this first. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want anybody on Dateline scooping us. So. Absolutely. All right, so I went ahead and put some apples in my taco shells so that I could maybe let it cool, surface cool a little bit. Mm -hmm. What I if I if I had thought about it, what you should do is you should take a cookie sheet and you should put your apples on it and spread them out. Because yes. then that it'll cool. They'll cool individually a little bit better. But I didn't think about it. That's another tip from slaying in the from our slaying in the kitchen. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So um, it was on how to cool pasta without having to oh. run water over it, and how to cool it fast without having to put it in cold water. Oh my gosh, it's so and smart. You spread it on a cookie sheet. Um, oh my gosh, yeah. we really are so smart. We're very smart sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't always use it for ourselves. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna um, dollop some whipped cream on these. Okay, I'm gonna dollop some whipped cream. And let's, I wanna see what yours looks like. Yeah, we definitely want you. Look at that! And we want you to take a picture of it so we can post it on Instagram because I don't know how to take a picture from a video. That's something for people that were born after um, 1990. Grab my taco. Oh, look at that! Wow, that looks good. It does look good. So this is mine. It's little teeny because I did the street size. <laughs> so it's like. <laughs> Ones. Those are so cute. So, they're very tiny, but I figured if it's a dessert, maybe I would go bigger. But if it was a snack, which that's got my name written all over it, then it would be, you know, kind of cool. Yeah. So, do you think it's cool enough to taste it? I, I think so. Okay. You want to taste this? Yes. Don't let your dog lick it. I, I haven't taken it. I'm going to have to take a picture of one mm. of them. Uh oh. I don't know how to eat Just do it over the sink. <laughs> what do you think, Liz? How's that whipped cream? Mm mm. I do not miss the cinnamon sugar. Like, this is really good just fried. Mm. Oh, good. Good. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm -hmm. That is good stuff, yeah. sugar. Wow, that's, that's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Y'all slayed it. We slayed it, Liz. Yes. <laughs> I am so proud of you. Well, I'm more proud of me because no. I didn't burn anybody. That's true. <laughs> but... We really appreciate that you came on with us. Tell us again how people can find you on social media and follow you. And everybody better follow you because they're missing out. If they're not following you, they're not one of the cool kids. <laughs> well, thank you so much. So Coffee and Combos can be found on Instagram and Facebook of the handle Coffee Combos Liz. You can go to the CoffeeCombosLiz.com website. My podcast can be found on Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts. And now, if you have a podcast, you can go on um, Facebook and listen right on Facebook. Oh. You go to your, you know, to the podcast page. It's right there, so you don't even have to leave Facebook to listen. Well, that is wonderful. That's amazing. We will all be listening to you, Liz. Thank you again so much for coming on and slaying in the kitchen. You slayed it like a pro. And thank you for, thank having, you for having me. Oh, thanks for having Our a pleasure. podcast out there that promotes positivity. And we do appreciate that. So when people listen to us and they need a little bit of a cranium cleanse, yes. they could go go over to Coffee Combos with Liz and have some cleansing of their cranium. There you go. Well, thank you so much. You ladies take care. You thank too. You and too, you Liz. stay sweet and don't murder. No, because I mean, that's right. <laughs> if you kill people, we, we'll have to talk about you and we don't want to do we that. We don't want to do that. But we would keep it positive. We would. <laughs> All right, you take care, Liz. Bye. Bye, Liz. Bye. This has been Sugar Coated Murder Podcast, a deliciously entertaining true crime podcast. Like what you heard? You can always explore past episodes by visiting sugarcoatedpod.com. Don't forget to like our Facebook fan page and share with friends. Thanks for listening to Sugar Coated Murder Podcast. Thank you
Thank you for listening to Believe. You can show support to your host by subscribing to the show and giving us a five-star rating on your preferred platform. Check us out at Believe.com and search for B-L-E-A-V on YouTube.